Hey everybody, it's Dana and welcome back to day five. Today is the last day of my 2019 holiday card series. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm wrapping up my Valentine's Day card series with a little bit of ink blending. I'm using dried Miracle, Warren lipstick and Seatless Preserves. I was inspired to use this color combination because of Christina Warner. And I'm also using these makeup brushes that I picked up from Amazon. If you've missed my review on this, you can check out the video below. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I am using some Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock, and I'm going to start with my lightest color. So as you can see, I'm using Distress Oxide inks because they are absolutely perfect for doing blending with. Because these inks are a hybrid ink, they really allow you to blend the ink a little bit better because they're creamier and they seem to blend easier than a regular Distress inks. So I'm laying on my first color and I'm not going to go all the way down the card, which is almost like a third. And I'm really going to blend that in. Next, I'm going to grab the worn lipstick. And these two colors are going to kind of create a third color. And you'll see that when I start the blending. So as I pick up some of that worn lipstick, I'm just going to go ahead and start blending that in. And I don't like to use just one layer of this. I really like to build up my colors. So as you can see, I am overlapping that dried Miracle just a tad bit, just so those two colors blend nicely together. I'll go ahead and keep rubbing that color in. And I do want to put this on a little bit heavy because this color can be a little bit light and I want to make sure that it blends perfectly with the next color. Now I'm going to go into that seatless preserve. I am going to quickly clean off my brush on my scratched piece of paper. And you can see how easy that is to blend off. And then I'll rotate my paper around and start bringing in that seatless preserve. I love this color because it's not overly purple. It has like a little bit of a pinky residue underneath it. And that color just comes off so soft and pretty when you're using the Distress Oxide inks. So as you can see, I'm just continuously using that great little makeup um, brush to go ahead and blend those colors together. Now I'm just going to go back and forth between the Seatless Preserves and the Worn Lipstick. I'll clean off my brush one more time. I'll go back into the Worn Lipstick and make sure I just blend those two colors together. I am going to add down a little bit more and bring that into the dried marigold color. Once again, I would clean off my brush. And then lastly, I would go back and use that dried marigold. Now this color is going to deepen up a little bit and that's okay. I don't want this color to be very light, but look how gorgeous this is and how easy that was to blend to get those beautiful colors. Next, I do want to come in with a little bit of water. So I'm using my Nouveau um, Mister and I'm just going to spritz this because I want to get those beautiful water splotches that we're so used to getting with Distress Oxide inks. I'm going to use my new towel from Pink and Main to dop up some of that extra water. And look how gorgeous that is. Those colors, once you heat them or once you wet them, they really become like almost chalky color and they blend perfectly together. So as you can see, I'm making sure to get my heat gun really nice and hot before I bring it to my paper. This is going to allow everything to dry nicely and I won't have a lot of bowing in my paper. So I'm going to make sure to hit the front of this cardstock as well as the back of this cardstock, just so I know I can make sure that everything is dried perfectly. Because I want to heat emboss on this with white embossing powder, I am going to double check to make sure that this uh, distressed ink is totally dry. If you do not do this test, you guys, and you go to stamp, you might have an issue with your powder sticking to your paper. But as you can see, this is totally dry, so now I can come back and do my stamping. For my images today, I'm using Concord and Ninth products, and this is going to be the Little Love Tag stamp set. It is absolutely perfect for Valentine's Day cards. If you want to make tags with it, there's also a die cut to make a tag. But for today, I'm just going to use the stamp set. 
as I peel that back, I'm going to use the stamp set that has the rows of hearts. I thought this would make a really great border around that beautiful oxide ink. So as you can see, I'm lining it up towards the side of my card or towards the end on the left hand side. And then I'm going to use my ink on three juicy ink. This is a clear ink that's going to allow me to use embossing powder with it. So once I have that inked up, I can close my misty lid and I'm going to rub down pretty tough on this. And I know I can already see it as you can too that the hearts are there, but I just wanna make sure to double stamp so I have all of the hearts at one time and I don't have to worry about me have missing any spots. Next, I'm going to go ahead and slide my paper over so I can get another row of those hearts across the top. So I'll just scoot that over one more time and I'm just making sure that I can get a clean row right next to it to keep that pattern going across the paper. Once I have it where I know it needs to be and I have that next section of hearts lined up, I can go back in and add in my little magnets to hold everything in place and then I can stamp out the next row. Now, just like I did before, I'm going to rub this down pretty hard, but then I do want to double stamp it. Now, you do not have to do this step. I'm just doing it because I want to make sure I get a good impression before I start adding that embossing powder to it. All right, once I have that done, I can go ahead and take this out of my Misty and I can sprinkle on that embossing powder. Because I double stamped it, I know that all of my hearts are going to be there. Now, if you did not want to heat set this in white, you can do it in any other color you want, but it would really look pretty and clear as well. Now, since I have all that embossing powder on there nicely, I'm going to go ahead and grab my heat gun. Again, I'm going to make sure it's hot before I bring it to the paper. This way, it's going to allow that embossing powder to heat quicker and it allows my paper not to bow as much. So just remember, when you're doing this, heat the front and the back of your paper, and this will keep it from warping, and it also keeps you from blowing your embossing powder off of the image that you just covered. Now, since I have all those gorgeous hearts across the top, I'm going to repeat that same thing across the bottom of my card panel. So I'll line everything back up into my Misty. And then I'm going to just shift over those hearts. Now I'm not gonna put this directly down on that paper. I'm going to grab just a piece of acetate and this is the backing of the stamp set itself. So I just grabbed the backing of that. So I can line up those hearts where I want them to be without getting any of that ink on my card. So this is a perfect way to make sure you line everything up and you don't get any overlap. Now I can come back in with that juicy ink, tap that across the hearts again, and then I can go ahead and press that back down. Now again, I am going to double stamp this. However, you do not need to do that. I just want to make sure that everything is completely perfect on this card before I take it out the Misty. And you really want to make sure that you have all of your images correctly where you want them before you start putting the embossing powder down. Because then it's just a little bit of a pain to like clear that embossing powder off to kind of get your stamping where it needs to be. If you just take the patience and the time to go ahead and set everything up the first time, you don't have to worry about those mistakes a little bit later. I'm just making sure everything is lined up again and then I can press this down. One more time, I'm going to go back to that juicy ink, stamp it one more time across the bottom of that card panel, and then I'm set. I can go ahead and pull this out of my Misty, grab back in that embossing powder, sprinkle that across the bottom, and you're gonna see what a beautiful design this creates along that awesome Distress Oxide ink blending. You'll be able to see all the colors, but it would just have this white little heart flowing kind of border across the top and the bottom. One more time, I'm going to get that heat gun really nice and hot, bring it over to my paper, 
I start at the front and then I can move this around to the back. Make sure that it's nice and heated and then you'll see how quickly that embossing powder melts. Just by having a really nice hot heat gun and heating it from the back and the front, you get to melt that embossing powder easier than if you just do it from one side. So look how gorgeous that is. So I can also turn it sideways if I want my hearts to run that way. But I do want them to stay at the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to bring in a sentiment from that same exact stamp set and line that up in the middle. Now, if you wanted to, you can stamp all of this at one time and then heat emboss it. But I like to do it step by step. So whatever I stamp out, I like to sprinkle my um, embossing powder on that, heat set that, go to the next section I'm doing, but it's totally up to you if you want to stamp everything out at one time and then go in with your embossing powder. I am going to double stamp this as well because again, I don't want to put down a, that embossing powder and I do not have my sentiment all the way on this piece. I can go ahead and lift that back out of the misty, move my misty out the way. And then lastly, I just need to come back in with that white, white embossing powder, sprinkle it on this adorable little sentiment. And this is going to make the perfect Valentine's Day card. And again, this is an easy card that you can totally mass produce. You can do this in a rainbow of colors, put your hearts in different embossing colors, totally up to you, but it's a great stamp set to make um, multiple Valentine's Day cards with. So I'll go ahead and heat that up and look how beautiful that looks. Now, since that's dry, I'm going to bring that up so you can see it. And it absolutely looks fantastic. So all I have left is to put this on a card base. So I'm using Nina Solar White 110 pound card base. And I'm using my Fiskars paper trimmer and just using the track in the middle to score my card. Now I can fold that over and use my Teflon bone folder just to go ahead and crease that edge. That's an easy peasy way that you know you're going to get a great fold on your card. All right, I'm going to grab my ATG gun and I'm going to put a good amount of adhesive on the back of this because it did bow just a little bit, not much, but I do wanna make sure that this sticks down to my card base. So I'll add a couple more little strips of that adhesive and then I can go ahead and line that up with my card panel. So I always like to use my grid to assist me to make sure I get everything straight and then I'll just line up my folded edge and then I can go ahead and press down that beautiful card panel. And look how pretty that card looks. Now, I don't want to add a lot to this because I really love the simplicity of this. But I did want to add just a few water droplets. I love, love, love these little flat back gems. Because to me, once you put them down on your card, they actually look like it's a, it's a raised up and very pretty water droplet. So I would just grab some of my um, multi mat medium and I'm just going to add a few of these. I don't want to go overboard because I really don't want this to distract from those gorgeous hearts, but I do want to have just a tad bit of definition on this card because the card is rather flat. So I'll grab just three of them because you guys know I love to do things in odd numbers because it keeps your eye moving across the card. And I'll place one more down in that right hand corner. Now, again, if you make this card and you don't want to add any gems or sequins or dew drops, totally up to you. Don't add them. I'll put that last one into place. And there we go. We have the final card for my Valentine's Day card series. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Make sure to swing by the blog because there's going to be a giveaway. I will see you guys soon in another video. Take care, everybody, and have a great day. Bye-bye.